Hello everyone, Dakian here with another review for you. This one is a bit unusual for my channel. It's the first time I have ever reviewed miniatures. And, well, the reason I haven't really reviewed miniatures before is because, you know, they're all pretty much the same. <laughs> um, this product, though, is a little bit different. It's, there's something new about them. There's a, there's a few new things about them. So, so what are these? These are the official, new official D&D miniatures called Nalzer's Marvelous Miniatures. They are, unlike the previous pre-painted D&D uh, minis, these are unpainted, though they are, do come pre-primed. And they, they advertise it's done with Vallejo primer. The manufacturer of these is WizKids. And the reason I have picked up a few of these is that they've started carrying them in my local game store. So I wanted to see if I could support my friendly local game store and get some good minis at the same time. That would be a win-win situation. Now, I have some questions about these. And by the way, when I say I'm going to do a review, I mean I'm going to do a proper review. Not like other videos I've seen on the internet who call their videos reviews, but actually just do unboxings. I'm going to look very, very carefully at these and I will even paint them to see how well they paint up. And there's a few things I want to evaluate. Uh, I, I need to look at the quality of the sculpts. I need to look at the quality of the casting, which includes both how, how the molds have worked and, uh, and the material. I need to look at this pre-priming thing, whether that's meaningful. And yeah, I need to look at how they take paint. So. Stage one in this review will be, well, that'll be the unboxing. Like everybody else, I will unbox them. But I'm just not gonna stop there. So I'm not going to, to subject you to me the, uh, trying to pry open these plastic uh, clamshells. I'll just cut to when I'm done. All right, Minnie's unboxed. Here we're looking at a close up of one of the, uh, what are they, Elven Rangers. I believe. Now, I had two major concerns before opening these. One was warping, the other was mold lines. Um, I'm happy to say that even the thin pieces, these swords and, and the swords on this guy, oh, th this one is slightly warped, but eh, never mind. Uh, I, I will make an experiment with that. The thing with warping is is that the way to reshape a bent sword, for example, if there's some sort of resin or plastic material, which this is, is to use hot water to soften it, pull it into shape, then use cold water to harden it again. And I'm worried that the primer they've applied to this might rub off if you do that. The other question is, of course, if there are mold lines that I need to scrape off, that will definitely remove primer. Uh, and that sort of will, will um, lessen the point of them being pre-primed. Now, before I get to that, the first question you might wonder is the material. Um, it doesn't actually say on the packaging what it's made of. I was afraid it was going to be resin, but it, I don't think it is. It's some sort of plastic. It, it There is a slight bendiness to it. There's a flex, especially, you know, a thin material like this, so it's not brittle resin. It's not quite bones, as in Reaper Bones PVC, but it's not hard, high-impact uh, plastic either. Uh, it's somewhere in between. It's kind of a, like a hard, it feels like a hard rubber of some sort. So this means it is, uh, I suppose, durable. It'll, it'll y it, you can drop it and it won't get hurt. It does mean it's very light. 
it, it falls over if you blow too hard on it. Even if you put them on these very small plastic bases that come with, that doesn't really do much. I think what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do what I do with some of my uh, Bones Minis, which is to take a metal washer and glue it on underneath the base. That'll give it some weight. Um, but that's just me. That's that's not uh, that's not really part of the review. <laughs> However, um, there are mold lines. For example, here you can see the seam line. Um, point, I can point with like a knife. See here, this running along the edge of this cloak. This this needs to be scraped off. And I'm not sure because it is a little soft and you see the shoulder pad here. There's a line running straight across that. It's more more obvious on this shoulder here. Um, can you scrape this? Is it hard enough to do it with a knife? Yes. I can sort of get that off. I can get that off by by just using the tip of my hobby knife and very gently scraping. But however, this means I will need to go in with a brush-on primer and reapply it. Uh, in some cases, the mold line is is actually leaves a little. I don't know what to call it. It's like flashing. And then you need to actually cut a little bit. And, and this thing here, that needs to be scraped like this. Now, for a lot of people, they could probably just paint straight over this and not think about it too much. But I want this review to be something for the serious painter as well. How, how would you approach painting one of these things if you want to do it really well? So I'm going to do this thoroughly. And oh, here you can see another really, really obvious mold line going down all the way down this uh, skirt of this uh, coat. Um, so that's pretty bad. And like I said, this sword is crooked. And here we have more flashing. So, yeah, uh, my, my preliminary conclusion is that the pre-priming is mostly a gimmick for inexperienced painters. I mean, no, and it, it has its advantage in that, for example, these clear plastic things. If I were to prime this myself, I would have to mask that off uh, if I were doing it by, by, by rattle can or airbrush. As it is, I can just find the places where we have mold lines. And there's not a mm, fewer of them on this dwarf, but there's a few places that here, for example, across his shoulder. Oh, more obviously here. This is very, very clear down this way. Um, where I need to scrape that off and then carefully use a little bit of a brush on primer to fix it again. And again, this the undercut here on on the robe has flashing uh, and yeah again they seem to be assembled of several pieces often they seem like the cloaks like it's, it's like the cloak and head yeah here, here you can clearly see uh, where the head, shoulders, and cloak have been one piece, and they've been glued on to the body. You can see the crack between them here. Uh, less obvious on this case. In this case, it seems like the whole upper body is one piece, and the legs were one piece, and they've been glued together. I mean, it's nice that they've pre-assembled like that. It's it's not a big deal to me. And here, there's something green. This is like. So what's this stuff? It's like there, there's a little bit of green stuff caught on this staff here. And you see where I scraped it off. 
you get down underneath. Let's let's actually ah so the plastic is actually clear under the primer. It's it's possible that the entire mini is actually clear plastic. Let's. No, no, it's just, it was just the staff. In this case, that was clear. And probably, yeah, you can see the hand here, where it's showing through the primer. Uh, so this hand has been glued on to the arm, and this is all originally clear. Ah, well, 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 let's see how the monsters fare. Oh yeah, there's a seam line running all the way down his back here. That's kind of unfortunate. Here is a big seam line here. Let's see the lower jaw has been glued in. Not very well. There's a big gap here that I need to fill, which of course means more priming afterwards. Oh, and this seam line leaves a lot of flashing on his paw here. Oh boy, oh boy. The smaller guys seem to have gotten away with less issues. And a little dragon. I mean, they're so tiny. Well, there's some flashing on along the edges of the wings. This seems to be a general issue with edges of the with this plastic. It, they're leave a little flash. Uh, now with this clear plastic, you can't really see what's what. It's a little confusing. I'm not sure how to paint this actually. But. I will get started on the cleanup process, and that'll take me a good few hours, but we'll skip over that in the cuts. Well now, these guys have all been cleaned up and glued to their basis, and I have touched up the primer with um, some uh, brush-on primer where it was needed, and I have also uh, prime the basis, slightly different color, but this is also Vallejo. This is Vallejo's uh, German Red Brown surface primer, which is technically a an airbrush primer, but you can use it by brush too. It doesn't really matter. So um, the next step is to start painting, but before that, I thought I would comment a little bit on the quality of the sculpting and the casting. I, I haven't said that much about it before. Well, I've talked about the casting, about the, the mold lines and so forth, but, but the actual sculpts are okay. Um, well, the big question is, how well does, does this material hold detail? And the answer is so-so. It's somewhere in between. It's in between bonesium and metal. It's not, a bad, not as bad at fuzziness of detail as Bonesium is. It's not as sharp or clean as metal would be. It's a trade-off. And this is perhaps exacerbated by the fact that they have gone with true scale. These, these are not heroic scale minis. They are what's called true scale. That is, they, they try to keep realistic proportions. In, in so-called heroic scale, often hands and heads are bigger than they should be because those are things that catch the eye. And often bodies are thicker and so forth. And now, now I can see I haven't actually fixed this mold line enough. Uh, I might go in and do some more on that. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll see. Um, and it's mo mostly evident, for example, in, in if you look at faces, now I don't know if the light is perhaps a bit bright here. The, these elves they have very thin, narrow faces, and at this scale, in true scale, and with this material, they they mostly look blank. There's no character to their, their faces. There's not much in the way of detail in the features. The dwarves are slightly better, because even in true scale, dwarven faces are somewhat wider and stockier than humans would be. That's the general idea of what dwarves are supposed to look like. And so you can pack a bit more character into them. And they've tried to to put detail in at least some of these simply by having a lot of texture. Like th there's a lot of folds in this cloak and there's a heavy texture on this shoulder piece. 
But on some others, like like the elves here, they've got smooth pants, uh, smooth here, and smooth. Everything's pretty much smooth, and it's yeah, it's gonna be hard to make anything look distinct there. And of course, with the really small ones, uh, like the imp and so forth, yeah, it's really hard to tell anything apart. So, yeah, on toward the painting. And lo and behold, now they're finished being painted. And, um, yeah, uh, if you've watched my Monday Miniatures Rambles, you've already heard my opinions about how these came out. But since this is a separate video, I will repeat myself uh, because you might not have watched the other ones. Um, my overall verdict is that, unfortunately, it's, it's, it's pretty negative. I, I don't think I'll be getting many more of these. And it's a combination of things. Um, partly the material, but, you know, I, I, I've... I've sort of half reversed my position on, on Reaper Bones, even though I hated the material to begin with. I've started to see the advantages of of, of Bonesium in that it's really cheap and it and for for uh, uh, monsters that I want big hordes of or or that are large sculpts so they can get the detail in even despite the soft material. It's okay. Now this material. Um, is, I think, even slightly harder to work with than Bonesium. And what they've done with it, they have not played to its strengths in the sculpts, unfortunately. That's the thing. They have created sculpts with a lot of shallow detail that doesn't show up in this material when painted. Um, now, these minis have been painted to my average tabletop standard. I've not gone really sloppy, but I've not gone uh, display standard either. I've sort of tried to make them look nice enough for game purposes, and, and that's it. And the ones that I'm happiest with are the monsters, because, well, uh, in, in their cases, the, the detail some of these are so small that you can sort of forgive the lack of detail and people don't look too closely at monsters anyway for the characters I'm I like the dwarves better than the elves the elves are just really really badly sculpted um, and and not in the sense that they're badly proportioned or anything but the thing is with the sculpts well sometimes they they have weird things like the way that this guy's clothing flows is very unrealistic. But overall, the main issue is that they've gone with what's called true scale. They've gone actually with realistic proportions, and that doesn't work in this scale with this material because you can't get pack the detail in. Uh, it just looks blank, like the face on this guy. And it's clearly CAD sculpted. It's not hand sculpted. And and they've gone, and I, I don't understand the, the dwarves. They they put some like deep recesses in, so you can catch some of the detail. But with these elves, they've just made them smooth and blank. There's no way I can paint this to make it look interesting. Oh well, and the poses are not that good. Again, for the elves, mostly for the elves, the, the dwarves are okay. Um. So yeah, I'm sad to say that this doesn't really fit the bill for me. Um, if I try to figure out, will it fit the bill for somebody else? Um, hard to say. I mean, sure, for gamers on a budget who, who don't want to... Um, spend the money that a metal miniature costs okay and and there may be not 
that concerned about the paint job, they will just do an extremely simple paint job on it, then uh, okay, the price and the, the pre-priming might be uh, attractive. Uh, but for anybody who wants to paint, for anybody with any experience in painting, the pre-priming is just a gimmick. It doesn't really matter. And and they're not fun to paint. That's the main problem. I, I just didn't enjoy myself painting these. I was just trying to figure out ways to solve problems with them. Um... Even though they have some cool ideas. I mean, dwarves, the, the basic ideas behind these sculpts for the dwarves are cool, but the execution is kind of lacking. I mean, what's this cloak doing? This is just... Uh, uh. So, yeah, gonna get a lot of hate for this, I, I suppose. A lot of downvotes. I always get downvotes when I post a negative opinion on something. It's the internet. Um, but whatever, I have to be honest, these don't float my boat. It's possible that some of the others in the line might work better for me. Again, I, this is just a small sampling. I, my, my local store didn't carry or, or maybe they sold out of uh, any of the bigger monsters. Um, I've seen uh, somebody on another channel paint the Beholder. Uh, that wizards have and make it look nice so yeah maybe that's something um, a s sort of saving grace for for the line you can pick up a few minis that that, that work um, but as as a general thing I, I, I I'm gonna avoid these in the future sorry sorry wizards sorry Wizards of the Coast, but this is a basically a, a below average grade is what I would give to this. Ah, well, that was my review of the Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures. I hope you had uh, some useful information that you got out of this. Um, and I have lots of other videos on my channel. If this is the first one you see, then you could subscribe and uh, click around and see what other stuff I have. But in any case, uh, this video is over. See you next time. I'm Dr. Yan, and I'm signing off.